okay friends here you are observing this is the figure of stamen or endosium we know that the endosium or stamen is considered as male reproductive structure of the flower because in stamen only male gametes are going to produce see here here you are observing dithecus anther okay in a dithecus anther there are two lobes are there each lobe is containing two pollen chambers in this way in dithecus anther there are four pollen chambers are there and these four pollen chambers are also known as microsporangia and within these microsporangia there are fine powdery structures and those are known as microspores or pollen grains in this video we are going to study how actually these pollen grains are going to produce within the pollen chambers that phenomenon is called what microsporogenesis that is the process of formation of microspores or pollen grains within the microsporangia or pollen chambers is known as microsporogenesis now let us study how microsporogenesis happens my dear students here you must know that whatever the cells found in the peripheral region of the egg anther these cells are known as hypodermal cells and these hypodermal cells are also known as archesporial cells now what is the speciality of these archesporial cells see here these archesporial cells are having the capacity to produce some more cells which are capable to produce new tissues now let us study what are the specialized cells produced by these archesporial cells and what those special specialized cells are going to do how they are going to differentiate what type of new tissues they are going to produce that we are going to study in this video see here archesporial cells undergo differentiation and they form two specialized cells and they are known as primary parietal cells and primary sporogenous cells and these cells are going to differentiate and produce new tissues now let us study what the parietal cells are going to do what the primary sporogenous cells are going to do how they differentiate and what they produce finally see here the primary parietal cells undergo mitosis and give rise to four layers of anther wall they are epidermis this one is epidermis okay endothesium this is red layer is called as endothesium and middle layer this is green portion is called what this is middle layer and tapetum this is blue layer is known as tapetum in this way the primary parietal cells gives rise to four layers of anther wall they are epidermis endothesium middle layer and tapetum what do you mean by epidermis it is the outermost single layer of cells which is protective in function what is endothesium it is a layer which is just present internal to epidermis and it is made up of single layer of readily arranged cells and its main function is it helps in opening of the anther to release the pollen grains here the word dehiscence means opening that is endothesium causes dehiscence of anther to release the pollen grains and middle layer it is present in between endothesium and tapetum it is made up of several layers of cells and its main function is storage of food and the innermost layer is known as tapetum tapetum performs very important functions like it secretes a specialized enzyme its name is calase enzyme it forms pollen wall it gives nourishment to the growing pollen grains and it also protects the pollen grains from the ultraviolet radiations these are the functions performed by the Uh, four layers of anther wall now let us study the second specialized cells which are called primary sporogenous cells what they are going to produce see here these primary sporogenous cells undergo mitosis 
and produce a specialized diploid cells and these specialized diploid cells are having the capacity to give birth microspores to give birth pollen grains that's why these diploid specialized cells are also known as microspore mother cells or pollen mother cells here the word mother cell is used because they are going to give birth to the microspores to the pollen grain that's why these diploid specialized cells are known as microspore mother cells or pollen mother cells and these diploid pollen mother cells microspore mother cells undergo meiosis and form haploid cells which are called as microspores or pollen grains thus produced microspores are uh, held together with the help of a callose material the callose material are going to bind four microspores together in a mass that's why that structure is called what microspore tetrad here the word tetrad is used because in each tetrad four microspores are held together with the help of a callose material and by the action of callase enzyme which was produced by the tapetum this callase enzyme which was produced by the tapetum acts on the microspore tetrad and dissolve the callose material and finally the microspore tetrad breaks and individual pollen grains microspores are released in this way pollen grains or microspores are formed from the primary sporogenesis cells this is microsporogenesis in this way the primary sporogenesis cells finally gives rise to pollen grains microspores this is microsporogenesis my dear students take the diagram of this one because it is for five mass and take the flow chart of this one it will it is very helpful to you to remember the concept okay now take the notes